Hey everybody, my name is Shane. So this is the first time this series is gonna get an introduction like this. I just wanted to come on and tell you what this series is gonna be about. So I really, really, really love two things in my life. I love ghost stories. I have always loved ghost stories. I love listening to them on YouTube. I have a couple of my favorite channels I'm subscribed to that tell spooky stories or ghost stories or murder mystery stories. But I also love to do makeup, but I I haven't been posting that many makeup tutorials because I feel like it can kind of get re repetitive and boring after a while just sitting there saying I'm gonna do the same five to steps that I've been doing in all my makeup tutorials first and then we'll get on to the eyes. I kind of wanted to marry the two a little bit so I want to do some sort of makeup tutorial for every one of these videos but in the background instead of just telling you what I'm doing step by step um, I want to share with you guys some ghost stories that I find online. I can also share with you some of my own paranormal um, experiences when I was younger but I hope this is a series that you guys really enjoy and I figured if this became a popular series you know for now it's on my one and only channel but eventually maybe we can make a whole nother channel um, just dedicated to these series as well. I just want to see kind of how you guys react to them and how they do before I dedicate a whole new platform to them. So with this first story, this is going to probably be a three-parter story because it is a little bit longer. So for these longer videos, they might be split into two parts. Let me know what you guys think and let's get right into it. The Dead Smile by F. Marion Crawford, Chapter 1 Sir Hugh Ockram smiled as he sat by the open window of his study in the late August afternoon. A curiously yellow cloud obscured the low sun and the clear summer light turned lurid, as if it had been suddenly poisoned and polluted by the foul vapors of a plague. Sir Hugh's face seemed, at best, to be made of fine parchment drawn skin tight over a wooden mask, in which two sunken eyes peered from far within. The eyes peered from under wrinkled lids, alive and watchful like toads in their holes, side by side and exactly alike. But as the light changed, a little yellow glare flashed in each. He smiled, stretching pale lips across discolored teeth an expression of profound self-satisfaction blended with the most unforgiving hatred and contempt for the human doll. Nurse MacDonald, who was a hundred years old, said that when Sir Hugh smiled, he saw the faces of two women in hell, two dead women he had betrayed. The smile widened. The hideous disease of which Sir Hugh was dying had touched his brain. His son stood beside him, tall, white and delicate as an angel in a primitive picture and though there was deep distress in his violet eyes as he looked at his father's face he felt the shadow of that sickening smile stealing across his own lips parting and drawing them against his will it was like a bad dream for he tried not to smile and smiled the more beside him strangely like him in her wan angelic beauty with the same shadowy golden hair the same sad violet eyes, the same luminously pale face, Evelyn Warburton rested one hand upon his arm. As she looked into her uncle's eyes, she could not turn her own away, and she too knew that the deathly smile was hovering on her own red lips, drawing them tightly across her little teeth, while two bright tears ran down her cheeks to her mouth and dropped from the upper to the lower lip. The smile was like the shadow of death and the seal of damnation upon her pure, young face. Of course, said Hugh very slowly, still looking out at the trees. If you have your mind made up to be married, I cannot hinder you, and I don't suppose you attach the smallest importance to my consent. Father, exclaimed Gabriel reproachfully. No, I do not deceive myself, continued the old man, smiling terribly. You will marry when I am dead though there is a very good reason why you had better not, why you had better not, he repeated very empathetically and slowly turned his toad eyes upon the lovers. What reason? And asked Evelyn in a frightened voice. Never mind the reason, my dear. You will marry just as if I did not exist. There will be a long pause. Two gone, he said his voice lowering strangely, and two more will be four altogether forever and ever, burning, burning, burning bright. At the last words, his head sank slowly back, and the little glare of his toad eyes disappeared under the swollen lids. Sir Hugh had fallen asleep 
as he often did in his illness, even while speaking. Gabriel Ockram drew Evelyn away, and from the study they went out into the dim hall. Each audibly drew a breath, as though some sudden danger had been passed. As they laid their hands in each other's, their strangely like eyes met in a long look in which love and perfect understanding were darkened by the secret terror of an unknown thing. Their pale faces reflected each other's fear. It is his secret, said Evelyn at last. He will never tell us what it is. If he dies with it, answered Gabriel, let it be in his own head. On his head, echoed the dim hall. It was a strange echo. Some were frightened by it, for they said that if it was a real echo, it should repeat everything and not give back a phrase here and there. Now speaking, now silent. Nurse MacDonald said that the Great Hall would never echo a prayer when an Akram was to die, though it would give back curses ten for one. On his head it repeated quite softly, and Evelyn started and looked around. It is only an echo, said Gabriel, leading her away. They went out into the late afternoon light and sat upon a stone seat behind the chapel, which had been built across the end of the east wing. It was very still. Not a breath stirred, and there was no sound near them. Only far off in the park, a songbird was whistling the high prelude to the evening chorus. It is very lonely here, said Evelyn, taking Gabriel's hand nervously and speaking as if she dreaded to disturb the silence. If it were dark, I would be afraid. Of what, of me? Gabriel's sad eyes turned to her. Oh no, never of you, but of the old Ockrams. They say they were just under our feet here in the north vault outside the chapel, all in their shrouds, with no coffins, as they used to bury them. As they always will, as they will bury my father and me. They say an Akram will not lie in a coffin. But it cannot be true. These are fairy tales, ghost stories. Evelyn nestled near to her companion, grasping his hand more tightly as the sun began to go down. Of course, but there is a story of old Sir Vernon, who was beheaded for the treason under James II. The family brought his body back from the scaffold in an iron coffin with heavy locks and put it in the north vault. But never afterwards, wherever the vault was open to bury another of the family, they found the coffin wide open, the body standing upright against the wall, and its head rolled away in a corner smiling at it. As Uncle Hugh smiles? Yes, I suppose so, answered Gabriel thoughtfully. Of course I never saw it, and the vault has not been opened for thirty years. None of us have died since then. And if… if Uncle Hugh dies, shall you? Evelyn stopped. Her beautiful thin face was quite white. Yes, I shall see him laid there too with his secret, whatever it is. Gabriel sighed and pressed the girl's little hand. I do not like to think of it, she said unsteadily. Oh, Gabriel, what can the secret be? He said that we better not marry. Not that he forbade it, but he gave it so strangely and he smiled. Ugh. Her small white teeth chattered with fear and she looked over my shoulder while drawing still closer to Gabriel. And somehow I felt it in my own face. So did I, answered Gabriel in a low nervous voice. Nurse MacDonald, he stopped abruptly. What? What did she- Oh nothing. She has told me things and they would frighten you, dear. Come, it is growing chilly. He rose but Evelyn held his hand in both of hers, still sitting and looking up into his face. But we shall be married just the same. Gabriel, say that we shall. Of course, darling, of course, but while my father is so very ill, it is impossible. Oh, Gabriel, Gabriel, dear, I wish we were married now. I know that something will prevent it and keep us apart. Nothing shall. Nothing? Nothing human, said Gabriel Ockram as she drew him down to her. And their faces that were so strangely alike met and touched. Gabriel knew that the kiss had a marvelous savor of evil. Evelyn's lips were like the cool breath of a sweet and mortal fear that neither of them understood, for they were so innocent and young. Yet she drew him to her by her lightest touch as a sensitive plant shimmers, waves its thin leaves, and bends and closes softly upon what it wants. He let himself be drawn to her willingly, as he would even if her touch had been deadly and poisonous, for he strangely loved that half voluptuous breath of fear, and he passionately desired the nameless evil, something that lurked in her maiden lips. It is as if we have loved in a strange dream, she said. I fear the waking, he murmured. We shall not wake, dear. When the dream is over, it will have already turned into death. So softly, we shall not know it, but until then. 
She paused, her eyes seeking his as their face slowly came near. It was as if each had thoughts in their lips that foresaw and foreknew each other. Until then, she said again, very low, her mouth was near to his. Dream till then, he murmured. Thank you.